let's take a look now at how we can do clustering in Power BI. So I've loaded up the clustering Power BI workbook. And in this workbook, I have imported the Iris data set. So this is a classic data set that's been used for quite some time. So to start off, I'm going to create a scatter diagram. And we'll bring in the pedal length and pedal width. And then rather than going into my x-axis and y-axis and disaggregating or not summarizing the data fields, I'm going to actually bring a third data field in. I'll just use ID. You can bring pretty much any numeric field you want in here and click on details. And now I've got my scatter. Now in the Iris data set, it's already been grouped into the various classes of viruses. So I'm going to bring that into my legend. And you can see now we've got the three types of viruses laid out in here. Iris setosa with the smaller pedal width, pedal length. Iris virginica with the larger pedal length, pedal width. And then Iris versicolor, which is uh, sort of in the middle, but more toward the virginica. All right. So with the advantage of already knowing the classes, we can take a look at how clustering works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scatter. And just like I did before, I'll bring in pedal length and pedal width. I'll bring in ID to my details. Once I have that X axis, Y axis not summarized, and then a details data field, I can actually go to the more options menu here, click on the ellipsis, and I have a new option here called automatically find clusters. So I'll click on that, and I get the clusters dialog, and it basically comes up with the defaults. And a particular interest is this number of clusters. Now, there are ways to optimize the number of clusters mathematically, and that's what Power BI is going to do if we don't tell it to do something different. So let's go ahead and leave that in auto for now and see what Power BI does. And you can see Power BI gives us six different clusters. Cluster Two, I believe, based on the colors, corresponds pretty closely, actually looks like exactly, to the Setosa. But when it comes to the other five clusters, they're spread out among, all, among the other two classes. But you can see each cluster is pretty tightly contained and, and grouped together and has what look like fairly distinct boundaries. And that is one of the um, hallmarks of k-means clustering, which Power BI uses is each data point is only going to belong to one and only one cluster. All right, so that gave us six clusters. And if we had no idea what it is we wanted to try and accomplish with this data set, we would probably start exploring those six, see if we could come up with something, or we may try different cluster numbers to see if we could find something more meaningful that way. Now, in our case, we happen to know that we have three classes. So let's go ahead, and I've got a new measure over here called ID clusters. And I'll go ahead and right-click on that, and I have an option here to edit my clusters. Now, we created these clusters based on pedal attributes, so I'm going to call this pedal clusters. And you can see when I click on that, it shows me how many uh, items fell into each cluster, 22, 50, 37. So uh, a decent spread of data points in each cluster. And I can also change the number of clusters. I'm going to change it to three here just because I know I have three classes and click OK and see what we get. 
And you can see now that I've specified three, we get groupings that match the classes that we've identified in the data set pretty closely. So cluster two, in this case, is still the same, the exact same as Satosa, whereas cluster one and three correspond to Virginica and Versicolor roughly, but with a cleaner boundary than we have there. There were some that are on, you know, kind of the wrong side of the boundary. If, we, if you look at the, the actual classes themselves, clustering is going to build a cleaner line for us. So we have a few that we probably would guess wrong in this clustering approach. But that's okay. It still gives us a good feel for what it is we have, uh, the groupings. Now, I'm going to go to another page and see how I can use that cluster measure we've just created to see, well, how does that work if I bring in my sepal length, sepal width? So I'm going to do that, sepal length, sepal width. ID will be my legend again. I don't want ID to be my legend. I want ID to be my detail. All right. So I've got ID as my detail, and I've got my all my data points listed out here. What I want as my legend now is the clusters that we had. And you can see now cluster two still looks pretty clean compared to the other others, except for one way down there to the left, lower left. Cluster one and three seem to kind of blend together when it comes to sepals. So you can tell just based on this clustering approach that using the petal information is a lot more useful than the sepal length. All right. Speaking of sepal length, let's see if we can do clustering based on sepal length and come up with something good. All right. So I will um, create a scatter. And we'll bring in sepal length, sepal width, ID, and class as my legend. So we're duplicating what we did before. And you can see here the classes, you know, kind of uh, blend between Versicolor and Virginica like they did in our chart on page two. Let's do another scatter and see what happens if we try and build clusters based on sepal measures. All right, so now I'm going to let Power BI automatically find my clusters. And you can see when we're using the sepal measures that Power BI comes up with four clusters. And we can see that uh, clusters two and, or no, three and four more or less uh, combined correspond to Satosa and uh, clusters one and two correspond to Versicolor and Virginica with, again, with that cleaner line between them. All right, now we know, and we can see we have our new cluster measure here. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that. And I'm gonna change that so that we know this is our cluster analysis based on sepal measurements, and I'm going to give it uh, three clusters. And we can see that the upper left two uh, clusters kind of merge once we get down to three. A few data points uh, cross down into cluster two now, and then cluster one. So again, cluster one and two correspond to Versicolor and Virginica roughly, but with a cleaner boundary between them than we actually have. 
And now we can do the uh, opposite of what we did before and take our new cluster assignments and see how those work when we put petal length and width in. And we can see like uh, we saw in Sepal, there's a little bit more crossover between the clusters when we get to petal. So just from a clean clustering standpoint, it looks like the clustering based on petal is going to be more reliable than the clustering based on Sepal, but it's uh, still worth doing some additional exploring and maybe you can find some clustering based on a mix or match of petal and Sepal information that might even be better. So this is how you do clustering and we'll go ahead and move on from here.